Hi, it's me, Dylon, and thanks to the recent announcement for Super Mario Run on the iOS devices, I thought a bunch of new boys would be getting into Super Mario Brothers and that old-fashioned plumber. The game is no stranger to difficulty, so I thought that maybe I would do a quick tutorial on how to beat the original Super Mario Brothers on the Nintendo Entertainment System and on the Wii U Virtual Consoles. Come with me and I'll show you how it's done. Hit that start button and begin your adventure at 1-1. Go right. Ignore that block. But get that block, consume mushroom, and increase in size. Time to go pipe hopping. Get that juicy secret shroom. Jump over chasm. Fuck these boys up. Consume fire flower. Rain hellfire down on the townspeople. Continue your ground-based assault on that turtle and many unsuspecting boys. But you best not harm those boys. Leap over multiple chocolate structures. Watch out for that pit of chocolatey goodness. Ignore most of this because your end goal is now in sight. Do a spin move, baby. One last leap and that flag is yours. No time for celebration, the next level is 1-2. Watch this cinematic masterpiece of a cutscene. Mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball. Hop over these elaborate stone structures. Get rich, baby, yeah. Hit this very specific stone block. When you come across this row of coins, leap across the chasm and gobble them all up. Hit these two blocks in rapid succession to receive yet another juicy, tasty mushroom. Jump over the littlest shop of horrors. And now it's time for a bit of elevator action. No need to select a floor because this lift is automized. Here you see me go down the wrong pipe, but with the help of movie magic, we're at world 4-1. Exit this rather large castle and advance to the right yet again. You'll soon find that tiny spiny men are being rained down upon your person. And the culprit is this sneaky little boy up in the clouds. You'll have to dodge this bolstering barrage of boys, but once you've made it to the four question block platform, you'll have yet another opportunity to treat yourself to a secret shroom. Mmm, yummy. Give that conniving cloud man what for and move on to the next section. Here you'll find many a piranha and many a pipe. Do your best to avoid getting eaten and the flag will once again be yours for the taking. But this is only the beginning of World 4, the difficulty is ramped up in World 4-2. You're once again treated to a cutscene directed by the late, great Steven Spielberg, and Mario is once again dropped into the murky underground of the Mushroom Kingdom. I'll be honest, this level is quite challenging, so I thought we should just jump into the ceiling and avoid this whole mess. Go right. Like Sonic the Hedgehog, I am a man of speed. Let us warp to World 5-1, where the going really does get tough. As you can see by the trees that resemble thick cotton ripped by your favorite YouTube vapor, this level is extremely gaseous. Another example are the white pipes dyed said color as a callback to Lord of the Rings Gandalf the White. Don't let all of this intimidate you, for just past this pacifistic paracoupa, there is a hidden star man residing in the block between this one and this one. Now that Mario is invincible, it is basically a gauntlet run made for babies as you make your way to the World 5-1 flag. World 5-2 really puts the jump man in Mario Jump Man Mario. Be very careful and jump only when I say to. Jump, 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 jump. Flag. Now for world 5-3, time to put on your cool future sunglasses and quite literally dodge a bullet. Many bullets, bullet bills to be more specific. Basically what you want to do is stay up as high as possible, that way you can cover more ground with each jump. Wow, jumping seems like a reoccurring theme in this title. Jump 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 jump. Flag. World 5-4 is where things get pretty darn spicy. Remember Mario's arch nemesis Bowser? Aside from being a good tennis player, wow would you look at those calves. He's also a pro fireball spitter. He'll be lobbing his hot hot balls of flame at you from across the castle. And it's up to you to make like a frog and you guessed it, jump a whole lot. A good strategy here is to use the elevator to jump onto the upper level of the castle for a brief respite. When you make it to the end, it's none other than... Oh wow, it's that sneaky boy from earlier. This sweet little toadstool informs us that our princess is in another castle. Who could have seen this coming? Definitely not me. World 6-1 is here and it's gone from the exuberant daytime we all know and love to this menacing nightscape. After being embarrassed by Mario twice in the past, that sneaky boy is back with a vengeance, and he's brought more of his tiny spiny men. While trying to chase that fool down, make sure you climb under this overpass and collect another flavorsome fungi. Try your best to be in this mobile menace with one of Mario's fireballs. If you miss, don't be discouraged. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take after all. You tried your best and that's what matters. Thankfully for us, once you've jumped over this exceptionally humongous cocoa based tower, that sneaky little boy runs away. Back to the drawing board for you, Lakitu. I hope you've got a green thumb because World 6-2 is all about botany, baby. Good thing we harness a grass organism's biggest fear. No, not an exceptionally large pair of shears. We're talking about Mario's fireballs, of course. Try your best to make sure you've depotted those pesky piranha plants before jumping past their pipes. And once again, stay high up when you can. If you're having trouble with this level, you can always hit this block here for a little star man. Or should I say my sweet little star boy? The rest of this level should be a literal cakewalk. I hope you like Black Forest. If not, maybe I could interest you in some pineapple upside down. World 6-3 might look like a dream, but there's one difference from the previous levels. If you die here, you die in real life. Stick to the moving platforms and make sure those jumps are precise and very, very, very tight. Once you've made it to the end, you're greeted by another very sizable castle. World 6-4 is once again a castle level. This one's got it all. Fire rods, 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 fire rods. That was 12. Make sure you dodge them all and you'll have another go at Bowser. But like the guaranteed sad moment in a Pixar film or twist in an M. Night Shyamalan movie, Bowser is just a shit-tier enemy in disguise. Bye-bye, blooper. Toad is once again the bearer of bad news. Luckily for him, our motivation to give that princess a smooch knows no bounds.
World 7-1 is basically just a recycled World 1-1, but much, much, much harder. Luckily, I've got some tips. These cannons are one of the only enemies Mario can safely stand on without taking damage. Use them for some well-deserved safety in this cruel, cruel world. Once you've defeated this hammer, bro, no need to harm this one because he's committed no crimes today. Hop on this pearly white pipe and hit this invisible block to snack on yet another savory shrimp. Now dab. In this secret coin-filled room, your greed is really put to the test. You're no Wario, so leave the remaining coins be. Head back to the surface and we're almost home free. Use the small black beetle for leverage and grab onto that flagpole, buckaroo. On to world 7-2. Paul Thomas Anderson's directorial talents really shown in this scene. Your boy Dylan isn't a fan of water levels as they make me very anxious, so just remember what Will Smith said in the DreamWorks hit fish film Finding Dorothy. Just swim. Once you've swam across the whole level, you're ejected through this level's blowhole and are free to add another flag to your collection. I really wish I had more advice for World 7-3, but you just have to go right. Even if you stop for a second, this fish will fuck you. Go right, grab flag. 7-4 is the final castle level. The final castle level with a fake Bowser, that is. This one is actually very, very easy. Go right, defeat this imposing imposter, and move on to the final world. 8-1 sure is a fun one. Start off by jumping onto this black, buzzy beetle and send him flying into your foes. But watch out, because he'll come right back at you if you're not careful. Take out these Koopas and hold onto that run button to keep going even over these chasms. Isn't that neato? In between these two pipes is a poison mushroom. Gotcha, it's just another one up. None of these enemies pose much of a threat, and it's fairly easy to just jump over all of them. Once again, we have another chasm, and another chance to go beetle bowling. Note, the running over chasms trick will not work on a gorge of this size, you have been warned. Leap across these phallic towers to acquire one of the final flags. 8-2 harbors the last we'll see of that sneaky boy. I think I might actually cry. Use this spring pad to bop these two blocks and collect this palatable portobello. Once you do, that little Lakitu boy will bid Mario farewell. Use the cannons as stepping stones towards a better tomorrow, but watch out for this old quarry or you'll be sorry. Continue on and ascend the chocolate to collect your spoils. 8-3 is somewhat of a siege on Bowser's castle as you break through his defenses. You'll have to dodge cannon fire, a Koopa, more cannon fire, a piranha plant, two hammer bros, this cannon fell asleep, this Koopa, two more hammer bros, another piranha plant, this Koopa, another hammer bro, his bro, and a final piranha plant, and another pair of hammer bros. Now ascend the floating staircase of chocolate to receive your second last flag. This is it, 8-4. This level is pretty tricky so I'll try to explain the best I can and in great detail. Go right. Avoid these piranha plants and a set of Goomba. Once you're at the big lava hole, don't be afraid. Jump into the first pipe. You will emerge elsewhere in the castle, but don't fret. The worst is behind us. Wait, no, my mistake. The worst is yet to come. When you see a floating pipe, that's your cue. Leap onto that soaring sewer pipe and sink your body right in. Continue right and watch out for this wet, wily boy. Jump into another pipe and it's time to go for a dip. For some reason, Bowser has decorated his underground pools with fire rods. I'm not one to judge, so I'll keep my criticisms to myself. Once you've emerged, it's time to fight fire with fire. Jump over this pit and fight the real Bowser one-on-one. -on -one. Finally, time to obtain that sloppy smooch we've been waiting so long for. Mario-san, wadomo arigato gozaimashita. Anata no thank you wa owarimashita. Watashi tachi wa anata ni atarashi quest o teji shimasu. Push button B. So no smooch, huh? Hey there, thanks for watching. Make sure to like the video and share with your friends so you can show them the easiest method of beating Super Mario Bros. on the Nintendo Entertainment System. If there are any other games you'd like me to make a walkthrough on, please let me know in the comments and subscribe if you want to see more fun stuff like this. I do Let's Plays and stuff as well. Special thank you to all my Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen as I speak. Have a great day and good luck if you're going to use this guide to help you beat the game.